Are you completely overwhelmed with file organization and don't know where to start when it comes to preparing and organizing client files? You've come to the right place. I will walk you through the exact system that I use to name, organize, and export files so cleanly that all of your clients will be able to find exactly what they need in seconds. And you never have to dig through old project files again. Hi everyone, my name is Gloria and welcome to, or back to for the frequent fans, my channel. And if you're not a frequent fan, you should be. I am sure you are no stranger to the subscribe button, so if you're at least a fan of that, now would be a good time to press it. Or maybe you just can't remember what color it turns when you press it, so maybe now would also be a good time to try that and see. And make sure to follow me on Instagram as well, at Gloria Made This. This is part seven of 10 of a series all about the client brand design process in which I go over everything in my client brand design process from onboarding to offboarding and everything in between. So picture this, we have just finished creating a beautiful book of brand guidelines along with all of the graphics, illustrations and components that they will ever need for their brand. But how do we actually send those files over to the client? Today we will be talking about one of the most important parts of the client brand design process and that is exporting and delivering all of the client files. So this process is typically done in a few stages, ensuring you're a neat little graphic designer with good file naming habits, preparing the files for Illustrator, exporting the files, organizing the files into folders, sending those off to the clients. Now, when it comes to exporting, whether it is brand collateral or any other files that you have, there are a few things that I like to take into consideration. When you are delivering the files to clients, while giving them the graphics or illustrations, exporting the logo, essentially you wanna give them everything necessary for them to be able to, one, use for any given circumstance, and two, for them to never have to contact you asking you to export the logo at a specific size ever again. We will walk through exporting the logos first and how I might do that. But before that, I would like to briefly touch on logo and file folder names. So just like everything in design, everybody's process is very different. Mine is a collection of things that I have picked up from working in the field, as well as from school, as well as the countless articles that I've looked at online. And this is the one file naming convention that I will stick to. If I am ever confused on how to set up a file or a folder or set up a system, I always like to imagine how the client will be searching for them. For example, if I am a client and I am looking for a full color logo and horizontal orientation for a hat that I am printing onto, I might open up my logo folder and look for an Illustrator file because that's what the printer told me to look for. And I would probably expect the file path to be something along the lines of logo, horizontal, full color, AI, or logo, AI, full color, horizontal, et cetera, et cetera. Or they might be the type to use the search bar. In in which case, what might they be searching for? They would probably search just by typing in keywords like full color or horizontal or .ai. So I have basically just picked one of those many variations that they might be searching for and stuck to it. So my logos are named like this. Brand name, logo type, color, size. In terms of information hierarchy, it's biggest to small. It might be something like Pieria, Tertiary, Pink Blue 1000 PX, trying to be as descriptive as possible so they are able to find it easily. Or Okanagan Horizontal, Full Color 100 PX, or if there is no size because it's a vector image, Okanagan Horizontal, Full Color. In terms of do I use dashes or capitals or lowercase or underscores, I like to use dashes. The reason that I use dashes instead of underscores is because I can quickly double click a word without highlighting other words, making it easier to change file names. Some designers capitalize each word, aka Pascal case. Some use underscores. And if you search on the internet, there is always one reason to do it one way or the other. But watch this. Watch this. Now watch this. Eh? But also some people prefer because if you're copying and pasting a whole bunch of different files, you can double click to select the whole title without manually selecting it. 
eh, one man's file naming trash is another man's file naming treasure. So I like to use a combination of Pascal case and dashes just because I think it is a lot easier for me to understand what a file name is while looking at it a little quicker. And I will also sometimes use underscores if I want to create a separation between a date or more important or big values. For example, or I'm not consistent about using Pascal keys in each file, but I am consistent in each folder. And I will always name files according to what I will probably be typing into the search bar when I'm looking for it later. All I know is do not use spaces in your file naming structures. It can cause some issues with programming, or at least it used to in the old days. Some people say it doesn't matter anymore. Some people say it still does, but I think it's better to err on the side of caution. Find one set of principles that works with you and stick to it. I know that file naming can be a really hard and daunting process, and it is so easy to hesitate and stay in the research stage for fear that you might not implement the right structure. But one thing I always like to carry with me is Anything you can do, you can undo. Just implement, stick with it for a while, doesn't need to be forever, adapt. Internal version naming. Before anything ever makes it to the client, I have usually gone through three to 30 versions of a file and they all need to stay organized so I can go back to it if I need to. My rule is simple. Name the file exactly how you would, as if you were presenting it to a client and add a version number to the end. This means that I can keep my folder clean, all of my versions live together, and when I am ready to export, I just remove the version number because the client does not need to see it. For me, versions are just for my eyes. They don't really need to go to the client, and usually by the time something is exported, it's usually in some sort of presentation or just the final version anyways. Preparing the logo files for Illustrator. First, I will lay out every single logo option on one master artboard. I also rename each artboard according to what type of logo it is. I use the export, save for screens, ensure to create subfolders based on format is selected, and add every format that I need. JPEG, width at 100, 500, 1000, 1920 pixels. PNG, select width. 100 pixels, 500 pixels, 1000 pixels, and 1920 pixels. I make sure that it's a transparent PNG, adding the suffix with a dash, and what the size is, for example, 100 pixels. And for PDF and SVG, you do not need to specify sizes. Then after that, I will export each artboard as an AI file all at once, as you can't do that with save for screens. Some designers don't like to give out the AI files, but I do because I don't see the point in not. Yes, it's a source design, but if they were really dedicated enough to altering the logo, trust me, they could and they would. But this is something that would be highlighted in your contract. And then I will go in and manually sort out each of the files and create more folders. The path is usually logo, file type, logo type, color. There are plugins that will do all of this for you, but honestly, I kind of like this grunt work and it allows me to keep an eye on everything that's going on. Then I will package the folder and that's it. Preparing the graphic files for Illustrator. So this is essentially as simple as just exporting the files as PNGs or giving them the AI files or SVGs, depending on the deliverable, and then ensuring that they are given the right sizes based on what they'll be using the material for. For example, if I am making graphics, then I would probably export them the same way that I would export the logos, and I would rename them the same way. Let's take these icons, for example. I would rename the artboards to what they are, and then since they'll be icons that are used as supporting materials created in a brand identity, I will create and export them the exact same way as the logo with the exact same sizes. For example, 100px, 500px, 1000 pixels, and 1920. And voila! We will sort them by naming them according to file types and colors. Additional exporting considerations. When the exporting is done, I always like to think one step ahead. How will the client actually use these files? Because if they open their folder and it's just a bunch of file types that the client has never heard of, you are going to get a lot of, hey, this is blurry. Can you fix it? 
email. And that is where my file type cheat sheet comes in. It is a simple one page PDF that lives right inside of their file folder and it explains everything. What a JPEG is, what a PNG is, what a SVG slash AI file is, what a PDF file is, and exactly what they'll be using them for. It is a part of my offboarding package, which will be available for sale on my shop in the future, but it's just a neat little cheat sheet that will save you a lot of time, a lot of headaches, and make your work look even more professional. Cloud storage and backup best practices. Once everything is exported and sorted, it is time to deliver. I upload and send my files via Google Drive, but WeTransfer or Dropbox works well too. My personal workflow is, one, export and package the folder. Two, I will upload it to the Google Drive in the client folder. Three, I will deliver the files with an email that also reminds them for how long the files will be available. Personally, I keep files in my drive for six months to a year, but it's definitely up to you to decide how long to keep the files. Just make sure that you are clearly communicating with your clients so there's no file emergencies later on. And that is it for file naming, exporting, and organization. If this video was helpful for you, make sure you give it a thumbs up so other designers can find it and make sure to leave a comment down below. Are you somebody who loves doing this type of organizational stuff or do you wish that it would all just go away because it's a bit of a headache and you wish you could just be doing the fun stuff like designing? Because don't we all wish that we could just be doing the fun stuff all the time? And of course, don't forget to subscribe because there are only three videos left in this series. Thank you guys so much for bearing with me on this journey. And I cannot wait to see you next time. Thank you. Bye.